Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about Penguin Highway, which was a random choice. Uh, but before that, we were talking uh, about, we were talking about, actually, honestly, it was really quick. We just mainly talked about our recording schedule, what we're going to be doing for the next uh, couple of, what, what, for the, like the next five, six recordings. A little bit, kind of yeah. a preview on it, and and what our schedules are looking like, and just kind of powering through uh, everything. Honestly, if and if you want to catch a part of that water conversation, patreoncom slash podcast a dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. Or if you choose to support us through other means, we do have the uh, affiliate link for you for this week's choice, which is Penguin Highway, available to you. Clicking on that link, going to write stuff, anime, purchasing something using that affiliate link. We do get a little bit of a kickback and it is very much appreciated. It helps us grow and and lets us know that you do uh, do like what we're putting out there. Or if you choose to buy your own uh, Swinky Swag and support us directly with our merch that we put out there ourselves, you can go to shop.featuredanimepodcast.com as well. And of course, you can go to featuredanimepodcast.com. For all that links and information, contact forms, and all that wonderful stuff. And now, onto the the um meat and potatoes. Penguin Highway uh, came out in August 2018. It is a movie. It is uh, based off of a novel. It ran for an hour and 58 minutes. Producers for it are Dentsu, Fuji TV, Toho. Uh, just to name a couple, the studio for it is Studio Colorado. Uh, Colorado and the genres for it are fantasy, mystery, and sci-fi. I think it covers most of them. I would hope so. I would feel yeah. like it does. <laughs> I feel like so it should. Did you what was did you have any initial remarks on watching the anime, watching this movie? So can I uh, can I ask you a question? Certainly. How did you watch it? Did you watch it subbed or dubbed? Both. I gotta say. Good. I gotta say. Uh, I prefer the dialogue in the subs better than the dubs. I'm just saying because uh, I, they changed <laughs> a fair amount in the dubs. They did, but I find uh, I find the the boy ca- the main character insufferable in both. He is insufferable in both, but uh, dude, I, I I can relate to him a little bit more in the subs than I can in the dubs. Really? I thought that his character progression in the dub was far better. We'll get into why. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into it. Now, what I will say is, if you watch it in the subs, um, you do get much, much more information not verbally spoken. And what I mean by that is, in the dubs, like, when you see a sign, it's not translated. In the subs, it is. For instance, in in the main character's notepad, He's got a bunch of stuff he writes down very meticulously, very, very impressively done for a kid his age. But in the subs, it actually translates everything for you, or at least the most important parts. Um, whereas in the dubs, you just see what was drawn. So I, I find that to be a little bit better, personally. Uh, that said, think, think Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, but like less human. That makes sense? Yeah. It was just, it, I don't know if it was on purpose, but the arrogance, the cockiness, the insufferability of having to listen to this kid pro- proclaim how great he is and how meticulous he is and how what a great man he's going to be. He just has to wait these originally 3,888, I think it was, 3,888 um, days. Yeah, then, yeah, 3,888 until he's an adult. And here, you know, so like the he, it's pretty apparent to him that he feels like he has his whole life planned out and, and he knows what he wants to do, where he's going to go, and everything like that, which is, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad to have a, a mentality like that where, where you have clear goals for it. Granted, I feel like for him, he's a little, ridiculous a little (laughs) extremely i think that's part of his character growth it is but i i feel like that has more so to do with like 
I mean, like his dad seems like he's kind of the same way, you know, I can see that. Like, like very limited interaction. Yeah. Very, very methodical, very, very stuck in particular ways. And, and you're just like, kind of like, Hmm. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that. Makes a lot of sense. He loves doing his research. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, the kid is exceedingly intelligent beyond his peers, which gives him what I believe to be a very minor God complex. Um, what I found to be most interesting about him is the fact that while he seems to be incredibly smart and sure of himself in his own mind, when he interacts with people he considers not necessarily his betters, but like more knowledgeable than him, um, all of that kind of goes away, uh, at least on the, on the surface. You know what I mean? He tries to talk to people who he believes his betters are as equals. Yeah. For instance, the, the dentist. The dentist lady. Well, uh, it's not who, that she finds him, her to be his equal. It, the dude, he plans on marrying her. That's why he's counting the days oh, yeah. until he's a, an adult. Uh, the Here's the differences in between the subs and the dubs is, is in the dubs, he doesn't talk about having a love for the boobas. All right. He doesn't, he doesn't talk about opas. All right. He doesn't. Yeah. He, it's not as pronounced. It's not not it. even broached really in the in the dubs. He mentions it barely. In fact, barely, yes, barely. I mean, like in the <laughs> subs, he he has full on argument about and defending what his yeah. love of them versus the subs. It's like barely glanced at, and then that's it, right? Which is why dubs, I can uh, I, I I can I can you know I can I can connect with him, right? You know, I mean, like yeah, who who doesn't who doesn't who, who uh, any tr- any straight man you know would always love the boobas any man of culture true a man of so, man or woman of culture <laughs> or woman of culture yes um so what in the subs what i found most pronounced is when you look at his notes they're all about boob size and trying to do experiments and he's like these bowls work but the the, the ends are wrong and I need to do more research on it. Oh yeah. Well, and, he talks about doing more research on a lot of stuff though, in general. So, Oh yeah. Well, no, but he's specifically, like you said about eight or nine times full on. Hey, what do you think of these boobs and why, even though they look similar to my mom's boobs, why do I feel differently when I look at these boobs? And then he's playing chess with the dentist lady as an excuse to look at her chest. And she calls him out on it. He goes, I'm not, I'm looking at the chest board, not your chest. And then he proceeds to beat her when he's trying to learn, supposedly. Right. Well, and then there's also uh, another person who is also of the same intellect level as he is. He mentions that she might be smarter. Yeah. Well, the reason why I say that he meets someone of the same intellect level is because while he may say she's smarter, we're at least able to visually see that they are on the same playing field in that regard. That makes sense. She's like, granted, also a she gossiper. beats, yeah, and she also beats him at chess. Yes, but to be fair, he's still a novice. He's just barely learning. Yes, like at the beginning of the movie, he doesn't know how to play at all. Hence the lessons from the dentist lady he wants to marry. Yeah. Uh. The so. The basic premise about the story, uh, Iomi, the main male young child protagonist, uh, he's got a, he's very knowledgeable. He's very intelligent. Um, he's often teased by his classmates as a result of this. But he's also, you know, as we already discussed, got a uh, crush and plans to marry the woman he met at the dentist office. Uh, and then one morning, mysteriously, Ping was just appear in the neighborhood nobody knows why nobody knows where they came from how they got there where they're going anything like that it's just they they managed to you know start appearing uh then he as it's kind of going on he's determined his scientific and inquisitive uh side of thing side takes force and he wants to figure out where they're going, find out more, what's happening and everything like that. And that's where the intellectual and the scientific approach really comes into play. Um, 
because that is hit what he makes all those notebooks for. It's for research and discovery. It's to methodically catalog and do experiments and figure out the wonders of the world for him. What's unique for him. And what I find really interesting is he keeps all those books he and does. multiple times uh, in throughout the movie, he goes every day. I want to learn something new every day. I want to make, become a better man so that when I become an adult, I'm the best that there is. I'm the best that can be. That's a fantastic mindset. It, it's, it is for lack of a better word, a successful mindset. Yes. And like, I, I know we're talking a lot about him. And for all intents and purposes, he is the main character. However, he's not the most impressive character or, in my personal opinion, the one that I wanted to follow. I wanted to follow the dentist everywhere. Um, but you have dynamics like in, in each location, he assumes a different role, um, at least socially in the classroom. He's bullied, but outside the classroom, he bullies the bully. So the fact that he's able to trick the bully into thinking, for case in point, bully goes to the dentist to get his wisdom teeth pulled. He convinces the bully within one sentence that, oh, he's going to die if he doesn't get all his teeth pulled. And that's why he's really there for. He starts freaking out. A bully wouldn't believe you, in my experience, at least. They don't take your words into uh, to be fair, account. To be fair, uh, yeah, the be reason... Fair. The reason why the bully believed him is because the reason why they bully him is because of his high intellect. True. So if you have if you're bullying someone who's extremely intelligent and then you have someone that's talking on a different mental and intellectual level and you are there for something specific already and he just happens to talk about something very specific without you without him actually engaging in the conversation. He just looks at him and goes off. Oh, you have this disease. This is what's going to end up happening. But I'm here only to get my wisdom teeth. Oh, that's just a lie. Yeah, that's what they tell you to get in here. Yeah, no, it was it was very convincing and, and very yeah. well done. Yeah, um, but but then that's the only time you ever really see him bully like that, because every time after that, he's always the victim of the bully. Like even yes. outside of school and everything like that, they chase him down because of what had happened. They bully him for it and, and everything else. So it's, it's not like he's always doing the bullying outside of school. He, he did it the one time to get even for his friend. And as a result, he got bullied even worse and tied to a vending machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. And honestly, that was rather, refreshing i'm glad they didn't beat him up or nothing like that but obviously it's not that kind of movie but to, to tie someone to a vending machine and he's just like all right i probably should have started with this i'm sorry are we good now yeah <laughs> oh his lack of awareness just again it reminds me of sheldon but like a worse version you know so um now that said i find that the dentist lady to be very interesting very complex of a character because she recognizes that this kid's got a crush on her but she doesn't necessarily dissuade it in its entirety she doesn't acknowledge she acknowledges that he feels this way but he doesn't she doesn't acknowledge the feelings themselves so she still treats him like a kid to a certain extent potentially up here uh and helping him do research and right as you would help like a younger brother. Oh, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do some research on this. Um, well, I feel like that's more so because she doesn't want to dissuade him from l trying to learn and grow. But at the exact same time, I feel like she's not truly understanding herself, too. And she's trying to come 100 to terms, agree with that. Come to terms with that at the exact same time. So I feel like she's kind of doing it as a test for herself to try and help figure herself out, figure out her own identity, so to speak at the exact same time. I don't know that I would agree with that statement for no other purpose, for no other reason than up until the time where the penguins start showing up, there wasn't really any, any need for her to question herself. Well, you know we I mean? don't know how long she's been there. 
We just know that she is a new addition to the area, a relatively new addition to on top of that. And oh, I thought that she would. and close to her being there when she showed up is when the penguins started appearing. Yes. But I so I thought the penguins were appearing after she showed up. They did for a while because he already had a love interest in her. Oh, it doesn't take long for a kid to fall in love with someone and it's love at first sight most of the time. Very true. Very, very true. But later in the movie, she mentions that she remembers her childhood. She remembers growing up in the town. She remembers this. She remembers that. Well, she doesn't remember growing up in that town. She remembers growing up in a seaside town, not that town. They haven't been to this, to that town or that seaside town. But then she also talks about how she doesn't know if those memories are real or fabricated. She doesn't know if they're really her memories or if they're just fake memories implanted. By who? By what? We don't know. We never get answers to. Exactly. (laughs) She just brings up the questions though. She's, she's just like, I have no idea if I, if I know who I am or, or, or if these memories are really mine or not, she, she knows nothing. She doesn't know anything. She's yeah. just kind of like, uh, and she's always had, I feel like she's always had kind of like that sense, that feeling where she's been kind of there at the exact same time, but at the, you know, but then she's also kind of like, am I, am I really supposed to be here? Am I really here? Do I, are my memories really mine? At what point does she actually start questioning herself too? Yeah. Well, I feel like she started, she stopped really questioning herself so much and started just going with the flow when they discovered that she could create penguins out of soda cans. And I never quite understood well, it's how not, exactly that happened. Well, it's not that, not specifically soda cans. Yeah, anything, but right. originally it was a full soda can. Right. Um, For the experiment and everything like that, it had to do with... And they do do specifically state oh, if it's dark and gloomy and in, in a very dark area, she creates bats because she accidentally created yeah. bats. But if it's bright and sunshiny <laughs> and happy and she's able to be radiant, she's able to create the penguins. And they were able to deduce this because when they tried recreating it, it was a cloudy and rainy day. And so they weren't able to do it. So I know I'm jumping around, but I got to go back to the. Uh a child and his father the two smart people talking to each other because i find this to be a very prevalent point in the movie um the boy keeps talking about the edge of space the edge of the world technically isn't like the uh, on a circular world the edge is technically space right and the dad goes well take a look at this bag would you say this bag is um let's say this bag is the world and he turns it inside out he goes see now everything that was inside is outside you understand and he's like not really and the dad goes well just keep thinking about it it's a really tough concept to understand but once you do everything will make a little bit more sense and i think that was very pivotal because it kind of explained why there was no edge to his earth his his world so to speak and when the girl was able to bring magic let's say into uh his universe his world um but they didn't have that think, conversation till after the experiment with the penguins, if I remember correctly. Correct. So yes, it, it didn't happen until a little bit after that. Right. So what I'm so that is like, that that would have. So I don't understand the backtrack conversation that you were talking about. Well, like, going backtrack like ha- to the because he was talking about the edge of the so, the edge of uh, space or the edge of his of the world and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's that. that's not backtracking. That's that's moving forward. Like he has this entire discussion with his dad after the fact. Oh, then I have it jumbled. <laughs> I thought that they had tried and didn't work. And then he went and talked to his dad and then they tried again and then it worked. No, what happened was what caused him to to have that correlation for the penguins and what made it work was she had bats appear when it was dark and their lights were out and it was completely dark and then it clicked for him well she hated the dark and everything like that and she accidentally made this when it was dark out and then he remembered the conditions that they had for the day for when she did make it it was bright and sunshiny but when they were trying to do the experiment it was overcast 
and not. Gotcha. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense then, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why that those two scenes jumped for me. Yeah. I mean, it's a great conversation that he has with the dad, and it's very applicable, even no, no matter what, because it's like all, in other words, it's like a matter of perspective or how you view mm. things. And, you know, you can take that particular conversation or what he's saying and just run with it in various different directions, have different viewpoints. And I'm positive that you and I can have very in-depth, very differing discussion on the meaning of that entire scene in its own way. We're not going to do that because neither one of us <laughs> want to sp- be here for the next two hours, but it could be done. I was going to say, head me off at the pass. I see how it is. Yep. Um, and we didn't even get to a good part. Like, well, we got to a few good parts so far, but like the in my mind, this movie has three separate arcs. The first one is when the penguins are made. The second one is the experimentation. The third one is the ocean. Or the sea, depending on the... Oh, they called it the sea? <laughs> tomato, tomato. Depends which one you talk, you, you watch. Yeah. So, but, yeah. It... By all means. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the sea or the ocean in which they're referring is a bubble of water just floating getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And it seems in my mind to be the polar opposite of the penguins and this girl, the the dentist chick. So they're connected in some fashion. Well, he makes my mind. Well, he uh, makes that correlation that they're connected in some fashion too. And that there, there's a specific energy that they're going, which is where the, whole edge of the universe and inside out type of mentality edge of the world discussion really starts coming to play for him. Right. And it, Mm. as he thinks about it more, tries to correlate it more and put, put the pieces together. That's when it starts really, you know, the foundation really starts getting laid down, but also it's not him that discovers it. It's, it's not, uh, Ayoma. Ayo Ama, Ayo Ama, that discovers it. It's sure. the girl. She the discovers chess player it. girl. Yeah, uh, Hamamoto. She discovers it. The smart yes. one. That's that's roughly around the same age. She brings him there because she also has a very high intellect, and she also does the scientific method, and she's cataloging everything, taking detailed notes to figure it all out to really understand what's going on yeah and i find that she's actually far smarter in my opinion because in order to keep people away from this area she creates a a urban legend so to speak of a silver moon that if you see it you will fall in deathly ill yes and so it keeps like most people away and i thought that was genius because i mean technically the the ocean is a bubble a perfect sphere floating in air. It looks like a silver moon if you catch it at a glimpse. So with that, oh no, I don't want to get sick. You'll run away from that, which I personally think is the smartest and best choice because if you get too close, it will stab you, I think. Yes. Well, supposedly, I mean, like it sends out these little spikes, but no one's obviously, well, maybe not. Right. And the reason why I say maybe not, I think, they're probably reaching out to grab and pull in. And the reason why oh. I say that, the reason why I say that is because of her dad and the other scientists. Okay. I can see that. That makes a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. Initially, when you first see it, it's a spike that makes the whole bubble thing look like a mace. Yes. So yeah, the initial danger we saw might've just been, you know, feelers going out to ensnare its prey. Yeah. So, the the yeah, whole method no, for them measuring it, taking their notes and everything like that's actually very well done. Uh the detail oh, yeah. orientation for them in general is also uh miraculous at the exact same time. I would say so. I I'll tell you this right now. When I was their age, I sure as hell never kept detailed <laughs> notes or was that artistic, I might add, in the least. Bro, the only thing you and I ever did at that age was finding stabs to beat the crap out of each other with uh, like that, that was like, look, 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 look. technical <laughs> technically we were 
not stabbing each other. We were playing with our wood lightsabers. All right. So, yeah. so, all right. Yeah. Or swords. I preferred to think of it as lightsabers and, you know, whatever. While I, the Jedi, right. was fighting off the evil Sith, you, Rick. I'm just playing. I'm playing. <laughs> um, that, that would explain the lumps in my head still. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah but yeah we were we were playing rather than doing research yeah but the, for the them? closest thing to research yeah for them it, it is playing yeah i was gonna say the closest thing to research i ever did and i i still to this day can boast about it i can make over 13 different styles of airplane that have a success rate of if you throw it and the wind is decent It'll fly for about 20 seconds on average. So okay. that, that's that's my only boast. And I, I, I'm i a huge nerd when it comes to folding airplanes. Well, good for you. Um, good and it started you. right around the time you, you keep hitting me in the head. That's so look, 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 look. <laughs> I'm like, maybe it's your fault that you're uh, that you're as smart as you are. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. I, it took a lot of effort to knock some sense into you. <laughs> I was going to say you beat the sense into me. Um, but. Yeah, and when it, it this is a whole secret that they these children are allowed to keep or able to keep. Um, I want to say for for the better part of a hundred days, because the beginning of the movie it's thirty eight hundred and eighty eight days. At the end of the movie, it's thirty seven hundred and forty. So you've got yeah, but we don't one hundred and forty four days. Yeah, but we days. don't know how long that he's known about it. I mean, like. And how long she's known about it, right? Relatively speaking. Well, I'm, I'm giving them like a 40 day grace period because a lot, it would be a lot to happen. So in, in a shorter amount of time than that, I'll give her the 40 day grace period. I'll give him a 50 day or, or a, a not a 50 day, sorry, a 90 day grace period. Okay. So you think that she knew, she about, knew about it, it 50 <laughs> days before him? Yes. Roughly. Yes. Well, I mean, you, that makes sense. It, it's enough time to start the rumor. Yep. So that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. That that that's a decent enough thing. But um yeah, and then you find out that the 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 penguins that our dear dentist lady is creating cancels out the cancels out the ocean. Yeah. Almost completely. Um but we really didn't find out if creating penguins as much as she does um is a draw on her or if she has an ability that has, like refreshes itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and there is a, a scene where it's nighttime and she's exhausted and he actually hypothesizes that, are you tired because you made so many penguins and you used up all your mystical powers or are you tired just because it's late? And we kind of get, the the answer that it's because of that she spent the powers because she was like yeah after midnight the city goes asleep and it's awesome and she's passing out and it's it's well well before midnight when this is all happening right well so i mean like sometimes sometimes dude you know you just gotta pass out because you're tired you don't have to be spending mystical powers for that sometimes you're just like exhausted especially dealing with a 10 year old know-it-all <laughs> very true but that's not how they they listed it here well maybe she didn't want to be mean and hurtful to the kid maybe but we'll never know that is 100 percent true we will never know and i'm okay with that <laughs> yeah we we have enough answers um but what i thought was really awesome that was the penguin the the, the little measuring device it's fully functioning in the sense of it works for what they need it to and it's factually accurate. If you wanted to build it, you could with everyday objects. Um, and they used Legos, a thermometer, a flashlight, and some string. And it looks so cool. Right. <laughs> it looked durable, which was surprising to me. Right. To, to clarify, they made a device out of Legos with those said materials and used it in their experimentation to help measure and figure out the sea or or the ocean orb floating there. Um, granted, I appreciate the fact that you clarified because I did. It didn't occur to me that I should. Yeah, um, it took me a second <laughs> to figure out what you were talking about too. So that's why I added the clarification. Um, they threw it at the orb that's floating there. It ends up getting sucked into it, 
and they had it on some string and the, the force at which it was pulling, even the string was dragging them along and they, he finally let go and poof, the string was gone. The thing was gone and no one knows what happened to it. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yep. So. Um, but they, they do have other beasts that end up starting to show up. Uh, and they do start yeah. attacking and eating the penguins and they're, they're kind of like a hybrid between a uh, animal seal, human, something else. It's, it's like a, I, I forget. What did they call it? They called it a, uh, what was it? Something weird. Yeah. I, uh, I confess. I don't know because I didn't pay attention to that particular naming scheme. If you put it in front of me, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's totally what it is. But I, for life, can't remember what it was. But I thought, in my mind, the ocean was sending these things out to go eat her, not her penguins. Even what? though they did go after the penguins. But because she was the originator of that the power of frequency, I figured they were all looking for her. You know, because when she gets, I don't know, sick or something, when she got close to the ocean, no. something happened where... no. no. To clarify, no. to clarify, she did not get close to the ocean. She got far away from the floating orb. And the same thing that happened to the penguin, too. When the penguin, they were taking them to an area, when they got to the exact same distance that, that she got off the train with, when they got the distance with that penguin that she created from the Sona can, got too far away from the source, from that orb, it just reverted back to its normal form. So it was a proximity to her. Or that orb. Or that orb. So did we ever find out where the, these powers come from? Was it the orb or was it her? Uh, came from the power of plot. <laughs> Fair enough. But well, the power of plot was that river. That was the power of plot. It didn't start. It didn't end. It just was. No, no. They even said that that, that, that was a very strange thing, but it intersected at that orb. It intersected, but it didn't start or stop. Oh, but... You can only hypothesize and theorize and, and, and everything <laughs> else. And theorize. <laughs> All there with it. All right. You know yeah. nothing. I know nothing. We got no answers. We just know that it was there. Do you remember way back in the day? It was Tuesday, I'm sure, uh, where I borrowed a PlayStation 1 from you. Yes. Along with Final Fantasy X. Uh, no, PlayStation 1 was not on Final Fantasy, was not. Oh, made. that was PlayStation 2. Yes. Jeez. Exactly. Which was coming out of your damn mouth. Play, you're, you're talking about Final Fantasy It was 7. Eight. No, it wasn't eight. 7. It was 8. Which one was the one with the the lamp that if you opened on the first disc, you would die? I just said it twice. Eight. You borrowed 8. I told you. 8. You, didn't, uh, you never okay. played 7. And 9, you never played. You played 8 and 10. And ten fair, two. Fair. No, you didn't play ten two. Uh, no, we we no, we don't talk about ten two. Yeah, ten two, do. I played. I don't like it. Ugh. Anyway, Titus, I played that game. No, for years. Dude. It wasn't Titus. <sighs> Not for Final Fantasy A. No, ten. Okay, well, you said when you borrowed Final. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I I am going to. I will. I will. I will. I will slap you. <laughs> I will send a fleet so, of penguins over there to attack you. All right. <laughs> so you got me hooked on Final Fantasy when it came on eight with PlayStation one, PlayStation two with Final Fantasy 10 with Titus. I bought myself. Yes. Now, granted, I didn't have the lost. I think it was lost Chronicles, lost chapters, whatever it was. I didn't have the expansion pack on it, but I played. There that was for no expansion hours, pack days. on it, bro. There wasn't. I, will, I am going to. I, you know, what? we're done talking about games. You're you're a horrible no, no, person. No, no, hold you're on. a horrible hold on. individual. A horrible no. person. We, no, you are a horrible individual. I got a point. Hor got no, a point you this. don't. You're butchering the games and trying to fabricate <laughs> no. a fake point. No, I oh, I refuse. Bullshit. I refuse. Uh huh. I refuse. This is not accurate. Right, says the man who's <laughs> like, when I borrowed PlayStation One and played Final Fantasy Ten. With Squall and Titus right there, and we had the DLC pack on With the Squall interwebs. And Titus. Ugh. Ugh. Right. Why you gotta hurt my feelings like that? Anyway, I played this game mm -hmm. for damn near a few years, never mm -hmm. finished it. Mm -hmm. And then you mm -hmm. happened to tell me that, oh yeah, the main character, not real. A dream of a dream. I was like, that's not possible. And then I beat it and I felt so empty. Like, Good. what the fuck? 
Like, I seriously, this is bullshit. Am, I'm happy. I'm happy you I felt that sure heat because of that are. horrible butchering you just did. I'm glad uh-huh. you feel empty. Mm-hmm. How dare you, you sacrilegious fool. Complete and utter side note. If they made a game specifically focused around Jack Ball, I, I'd play it. I, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd buy it just to play that. No, you wouldn't awesome because game. there was no game called that. Blitzball. Blitzball. Whatever. Jeez, you know what, God. dude? I'm telling you. <laughs> God, you know what, man? Uh, I don't know you anymore. Lie, do I'm not. I'm not, I, I don't know you anymore, man. You're dead to me. All right. On a scale of <laughs> oh, one to hurtful. ten. Just, let's just end this now. End my pain and suffering now. Jeez. Oh my God. Just. Uh-huh. Uh, well, you can't call it a blitz ball. You got to call it jack ball from now on. No, I refuse. Anyway. No, there's um, there's a lot more that goes on in the in the movie. Uh, a lot of it's kind of like end game style stuff. Uh, and the reason why he, you know, you were bringing it up, I understand why is because ultimately that's what ends up happening. Is yeah, you know, we don't know if she was real or not. Well, I mean, like we know she was real, but she doesn't even know if she was real. She just did some fucking peers, and you're like, bro, the language out of your mouth sometimes, like Jesus, criminy. <laughs> Save yourself on that one. Um, uh, no, I just it it felt very disingenuous. Yeah, I, I went on this whole path with with these characters, only to find out that maybe I didn't. Right. Maybe I hallucinated. Maybe you know, they hallucinated. Maybe. You don't know. We don't know. Oh, it felt very empty. I rem- they reminded Good. me heavily of that. Good. Glad. Good. I'm glad you you're felt just mad empty. I, you're, you're just mad because my, my memories were incorrect and it offended your sensibilities. I mean, like that, I'm, I'm not the only person that that offends. I'm just throwing that out there right now. Ah, you're the only person listening right now. <laughs> well, we don't know that for sure. But you know this what? is true. This is true. At time of recording, I don't see anybody in the comment section blowing me up. So true, true, true. <laughs> Anyone that's truly worth their weight and salt, anyways, is not gonna openly refute you publicly, other than me. <laughs> publicly, <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. No, I mean it's. Oh, overall, and, the movie and, wasn't bad. Go ahead. Oh, and and, oh, and CJ in our in our chat also uh, <laughs> cough cough wants to uh, also refute you. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know. I just see the cough cough. I don't see any refuting. He he he's on my side on this one. Um. <laughs> that said, um, the movie wasn't bad. It had decent visuals. The story was a unique. I'll give it that. Um. I didn't really notice any music. Did it was you? There. Yeah, it was there. But like it wasn't prominent for me. Yeah, I could see that. Like it, it helped move it, it helped move the story along, but it didn't. It wasn't the focal point. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't prominent enough that I was like, "Ooh, nice." Um, I wasn't. I felt like the movie didn't really have. It's not necessarily a purpose, but it didn't have a crescendo. You know what I mean? It didn't have a a, a bursting climax where everything comes together. And you're like, oh, that's perfect. That makes sense. It, it left a lot of open holes for me. It was talking about, um, look, it was a, it was a, what was it? It was a, a beautiful, what's the word called? Moral. On, okay, what on was the moral? The, the moral of uh, having your priority straight for Opas. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be doing that to me mid drink, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Nah. I mean it was assuming you don't get too attached to any of the characters, it's a great show. It's a great movie. Yeah. And the way that they left it kind of open ended where he runs out to the middle of the field and finds his uh his machine we were talking about earlier, the Lego the penguin ship. Right, right. The Lego thing that he finds that and he's like I'm gonna find her one day. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? He's a kid. Pure and simple. He's a kid. We can only hope he grows out of it. All right. So what you're telling me is you want him to grow out of the Opa phase. Got it. No. Got uh, it. Out of the the dumb phase. I mean. Fair enough. We're talking about a fantasy movie where they have a floating ball of water and penguins inside that floating ball of water start flying. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I can only assume he will eventually. There are some things boys grow out of. That phase, you never grow out of it. The <laughs> the the stupidity phase, eh, most of the time you never grow out of it. <laughs> I'll just say we're still there. Hey, 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 hey. Oh man. I grew out oh. of it a little bit. All right. Give me some uh-huh. credit. Mm-hmm. All right. You still got your membership. You pay your monthly dues. Hey, there's no point in burning bridges, all right? <laughs> that's fair Ugh, god all right man well i hate to say it I, I don't have too much more neither do i so i think this is a great spot for a for a rating sir so on a scale of one to ten how would you rate this with the exception of that twist at the end i loved it but because of that twist and the emotions it brought back from final fantasy i which one would that be sir <clears throat> Seven. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with with the walk a shot, you know, um, <laughs> your facial expression is perfect. Yes. For those of you listening, it's it's just horror. No, it's um, pain is what it is. I'm just purely pained. Uh, no, like, it, it's Final Fantasy X. I played it for so long. I was attached to so many characters only to find out that it was meaningless right. for me so to do you're, any but of that. You, but you're but you're you're rating sorry you're rating you're rating here sorry i, I was just explaining here so are you saying similarly. you're giving it a 10 is that what you're I'm saying i'm giving it a three i'm giving it a three at least someone's here for for me all right thanks thanks cj so you're giving it a three i'm giving it a three yes okay i mean like that's funny that you're giving it a three when you're saying it, you love the movie it was so great and you had a lot of positive to i say did about it. i did you know it, it's like a meal that you have and you're like this is amazing this is a fantastic meal mm-hmm. and then they finish it off with like kale or some crap like that and you're like kale well, is healthy my palate kale is healthy, really but re- doesn't taste good tastes fine i have it in solids to me to me okay well that you can't this is say why you're we- bro you're a third of me okay I, of course you eat kale oh <laughs> man yeah, That's yeah. Uh, like, uh, it, uh, for, CJ in our me, chat says, "Good Lord, dude, love the movie." Then gave it a three. Not enough TNA. <laughs> well, I mean, there there was there was a severe lack of, of the beach scene, um, but uh, it, the the ending for me ruined everything that I found good about it. So, like, the last taste in my mouth is is, is not nothing higher than a three. I would not watch it again. I would not offer someone else. I wouldn't show this to somebody else. Okay. So I mean, it's honestly, I'm I'm shocked. I mean, like you had so much positive to say about it, and then you're like, ah, I give this a three. It's trash. The ending. That's uh, what killed it for me. That's that's fine. No, hey, you know what? I'm just saying. Like, if I give something a three, I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm gonna give it a seven. And the reason why I'm giving it a seven is because I like the artwork. It was. The colors, the scenery was fine. The music didn't detract from it. It was there, but it wasn't overwhelming. It was nicely done. Uh, didn't like the ending. The opening was the ending was just kind of eh for me. Uh, I I feel like the penguins were were a nice change of pace from like the normal like oh we have a mystical power type thing or whatever it is. The penguins being there, I feel like are great. You know, it's it's out of the norm, you know, it's and you have a completely different approach and viewpoint from the normal what we have. We have a kid that's a kid, but stupidly intelligent, right? Crazy smart. And you have representations of the scientific method and being able to test and theorize and figure things out, documentation and being able to accurately go through that. And then you have the self growth and trying to figure out everything on top of it. So I, I, I thought it was a really good, good movie. Did not like, I I did not like the ending. The kid still annoyed me, which is why I'm still giving it a seven, but overall I felt like it was, it was very well done. So I'm I'm giving it a seven. Okay. I mean, agree to disagree on this one. Like uh, you have all valid points with with the exception of that, that ending just, it felt way worse to me than than how good everything else felt. The ending was oh. was kind of like when they started talking about, oh, I'm I'm not sure who I am. I don't know if my memories are really my memories or this and that. Oh yeah. It, it uh, was you see it from a mile away. Right. And so my 
personal opinion on on her being there. She was specifically created to integrate with society and the people around her so that way she could plug and conceal the ripple in space and time. Kind of the world writing itself. The universe fixing its own problems. Okay. Like she 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 is the she is the white blood cell fighting off an infection. Okay, I can see that. Doesn't make me any any closer to a four, but um, I, I can see that. Yeah, no, but so uh next week we are gonna be watching a, another movie. Uh right. if you listen to the pre-show, you will have heard why we're doing cranking out a lot of movies right now. Um but this one's gonna be called uh Metal Skin Panic Maddox Zero One. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh I know nothing about it too. But I do know the I do know that it's an older one. It came out in nineteen eighty five, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Probably roughly what, around what there. What was it again? Nineteen eighty five. No, the name of it. No. Uh it's in the show notes, it's on the calendar, Thank it's God. everywhere. All right. Okay. Um <laughs> like metal super califragilistic. All right. Um <laughs> and on that wonderful note, uh if you feel like we Got something right, something wrong, did it too much justice, not enough justice, just plain all we're ridiculous and grotesque and everything else, you know, feel free to let us know. You can uh, contact us and all that other wonderful stuff on our website. You can go to go there, featuredamapodcast.com, all our links and everything like that's there. If you want to hear the pre and post show that we usually do with every episode, you can go to patreon.com slash Featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. And if you want to buy the movie that we talked about today, we do have the affiliate link for you in the show note. If you click on that link, purchase anything, the movie or anything like that, we do get a little bit of a kickback and it is very much appreciated. And if you want to buy some swanky swag that is ours that we put out there ourselves, you can go to shop.featuredanimepodcast.com. And until next time, I'm Jack. I'm Rick. And we'll see you next time.